Hey people, it's not as talking. Now this is an interesting story I wanted to share with, with you. This is from SciTech Daily. Scientists genetically engineered bacteria to protect bees from colony collapse. Scientists from the University of Texas at Austin report in the journal Science that they have developed a new strategy to protect honeybees from a deadly trend known as colony collapse, genetically engineered st- strains of bacteria. An increasing number of honeybee colonies in the U.S. have seen dwindling numbers of their adult bees. According to a national survey, beekeepers lost nearly 40% of their honeybee colonies last winter, the highest rate reported since the survey began 13 years ago. The engineered bacteria live in the guts of honeybees and act as biological factories, pumping out medicines, protecting the bees against two major causes of colony collapse, viral mites and deformed wing virus. Researchers believe their method could one day scale up for agricultural use because the engineered bacteria are easy to grow, Inoculating the bees is straightforward and the engineered bacteria are unlikely to spread beyond bees. Unlikely. It has direct implications for bee health, said Nancy Moran, a professor of integrative biology and the primary investigator on the study. This is the first time anyone has improved the health of the bees by genetically engineering their microbiome, added Sean Leonard, a graduate unit student and the first author of the study. Viral mites and deformed wing virus often come together. As the mites feed on bees, they can spread the virus are also weakening the bees and making them more vulnerable to pathogens in the environment. To address each problem, the team engineered one strain of bacteria to target the virus and another for the mites. Compared to control bees, the bees trained with the, treated with the strain of bacteria targeting the virus tr- were 36.5% more likely to survive to day 12. Meanwhile, viral mites feeding on another set of bees treated with the mite targeting strain of bacteria were about 70% more likely to die by day 10 than mites feeding on control bees. According to the American Beekeeping Federation, honey bees contribute nearly $20 billion each year to the value of U.S. crop production. They play an enormous role in global food production. Without honey bees, dozens of crops, from almonds to berries to broccoli, would either vanish or produce significantly less food. Like humans, honey bees have an ecosystem of bacteria in their guts called uh, a microbiome, and also antiviral defense mechanism called RNA interference (RNAAI) that helps the body fight off certain viruses called RNA viruses. When an RNA virus is introduced, it produces molecules called double-stranded RNAs that a healthy cell detects, triggering an RNAAI immune response. You usually only get signs of these molecules when an RNA virus is replicating, Moran said. It's a signal that this might be an evil thing and you should attack it. To promote a helpful RNAI response to the virus in bees and trigger a lethal RNA Response to the mites, the team introduced modified bacteria to hundreds of bees in a laboratory setting. Sprayed with sugar water solution containing the bacteria, the bees groom one another and ingested the solution. The team found inoculating young worker bees with the engineered bacteria led the bees' immune system to be primed to protect them against the deformed wing virus, which is an RNA virus, and caused the mites' own immune systems to fight against and ultimately kill them. While the experiment occurred under strict biocontainment protocols used with genetic engineering, Moran said, even absent such pro- uh, protocols, the risk of the engineered bacteria escaping into the wild, infecting other insects, and thereby confirming some, a- confirming some anti-pest or anti-pathogen superpowers, is very low. The type of bacteria used are highly specialized to live in the bee gut, can't survive for long outside of it, and are protective for a virus that strikes only bees. Still further research will be needed to determine the effectiveness and safety of the treatments in agricultural settings. Another benefit of the approach is for researchers to use as a tool in studying bee genetics. The engineered bacteria can knock down specific bee genes, enabling insights into the workings of the bee genome, and possibly enabling new breeding strategies to produce more robust bee colonies. Reference, uh, that's just the book. The senior author is Associate Professor Jeffrey Barrick, of a co-authors are Professor Andy Ellington, Associate Professor Byron Davies, Research Associate Ellie Powell, former postdoctoral researcher Jiri Peratkua, postdoctoral fellow Peng Geng, undergraduate Luke Hickman, and research scientist medical assistant Richard D. Horak. Moran, whose remarkable career was recently profiled in Science Magazine, holds the Warren J. and Viola R- May Raymer Chair funding for this research was provided by the National Institutes of Health and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. What a surprise. Anyway, I'm sure you can easily imagine how this could go horribly wrong. So please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. I'll leave this article in the description and the pinned comment. If you like to support this channel, I'll leave my GoFundMe there as well. If you like to follow me on Instagram, you can follow me there as well. Peace.